Hi, this is Amr Abdikawad and we're going to discuss today a back pain in children. This is the first part of this topic and in this topic we're going to speak about general management and there will be part two of this lecture which is going to speak about specific diseases. So what are the objectives of part one? In part one we're going to list the common causes of back pain in children and then we're going to speak about the general management of back pain in children, how to take the history, how to do the exam, what are the imaging studies and laboratory studies that you do. Part two, we'll speak about uh, the specific causes of back pain in children. We'll discuss the common causes in details, uh, and we will discuss w uh, which types do you need to, um, uh, to uh, refer to an orthopedic surgeon and which type uh, that can be managed with the primary care physician. A good source that you can use is this book, Pediatric Orthopedic a Handbook for Primary Care Physician by myself and Dr. Naga. So we'll start with listing the common causes of back pain and then we'll speak about uh, the most common of these in details. So the most common cause of back pain is mechanical back pain or muscle strain. Uh, then uh, there is some deformity that can cause uh, back pain as Sherman kyphosis. Infection can uh, cause back pain, uh, whether discitis or osteomyelitis or TB spine. So other causes of back pain, uh, trauma to the spine, uh, we may have vertebral fractures or osteoporotic compression fracture as we're going to see later on. Uh, spondylolysis and spondylolithesis are uh, common causes of back pain. Uh, tumor also can cause back pain like osteodosteoma or leukemia or other tumors. Uh, all these can cause back pain. Other causes of back pain uh, is disc prolapse. Uh, it's not as common in adults, but still can, co uh, can happen in children. Uh, sacroiliac joint pain also can cause back pain, and there are many causes of sacroiliac uh, joint pain. Uh, it can be mechanical, it can be due to limb length discrepancy. Um, uh, sometimes uh, septic arthritis can happen in the sacroiliac joint, or it can be inflammatory arthritis uh, like uh, writer's disease or ankylosing spondylitis. So let's discuss what is the general management of a child presenting with back pain. Uh, history taking is the first step and is a very important step in the general management. So you have to ask about this pain in detail. Where exactly is that pain? Uh, what increase? What decrease? Um, if this pain radiates or not, this is very important. You have to ask about the radiation, if there is uh, any pain uh, in the leg and if that radiation goes distal to the knees or not, uh, because uh, pain in the back radiating to the uh, leg distal to the knee is an indication of radiculopathy or compression of the roots, uh, like uh, what happens uh, uh, with the herniated discs. Uh, also ask if this patient prevents the child from doing the regular activity that he used to do. Uh, and then you have to ask about the history of the red flag, the thing that will uh, cause you to, uh, to uh, dig more deep and uh, do more work up and do imaging studies uh, like weight loss or fever, uh, if there is a history of weakness or numbness of the lower extremity, if there is a bowel uh, or bladder dysfunction, uh, if there is trouble walking or a um, young ch uh, uh, child like two years old that used to walk for a few months and now he can't walk anymore. Uh, I also ask if that pain uh, prevent the child from sleeping. This is very important. Does this uh, pain comes more at night and prevent the child from sleeping? And uh, al always be worried for children less than five years presenting with back pain. So after history taking, um, you do examination of the child. Uh, so first, uh, in the inspection assessment of the deformity, um, as we said, Sherman kyphosis um, is a, a common cause of pain uh, in adolescent uh, boys. It's more common in boys, as we're going to see. Uh, remember, scoliosis associated with adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, which is common in females, is usually a non-painful uh, uh, condition. So kyphosis, the Sherman kyphosis, sometimes causes pain. Remember, scoliosis, in most of the cases, does not cause pain. And then you assess the range of the motion of the back. Uh, if the patient has pain with extension, uh, that can give you a hint that it may be a spondylosis or a spondylolithesis. Uh, so remember, pain with extension is a spondylolysis or a spondylolithesis. Pain with flexion, that's uh, more common with vertebral body or disc disease. And uh, it's very common children with discitis or osteomyelitis. Uh, they will refuse to bend their uh, back to pick an object from the floor. What they will do is that they will bend their knees and their hips. 
As we discussed before, sacroiliac joint is one of the common causes of back pain, and that's why the examiner should assess the sacroiliac joint to see if the pain is coming actually from the sacroiliac joint or not. A few th tests that you can do to see uh, if the pain is originating from the sacroiliac joint or not. First is palpation of the sacroiliac joint. So the examiner uh, palpate the sacroiliac joint from the back and see if this is causing uh, pain to the patient or not. Uh, compression on the iliac wing also uh, will cause pain if the pain is originating from the sacroiliac joint so the examiner will put one hand here one hand here and will compress uh, from both sides to the midline and um, see if this is causes uh, pain over the sacroiliac joint uh, Faber test is a uh, test that we use commonly to assess sacroiliac joint pain it's flexion abduction and external rotation so it's flexion abduction external rotation of the hip and um, uh, if the pain is coming from the sacroiliac joint it will result in pain over the sacroiliac joint so as you see in this picture uh, the examiner did um, flexion abduction and external rotation of the hip joint and see if this will cause a uh, pain over the sacroiliac joint uh, another very important test that um, has to be done for patient presenting with back pain is the straight, straight leg raising test. Straight leg raising test is basically a test that assists if there is radiculopathy or um, a, a, a component for the back pain or not. And the positive result uh, requires shooting pain in the back of the lower extremity radiating distal to the knee level. So it's very important that the radiating pain has to go distal to the knee level. So well, how you do this is a straight leg raising test so you basically raise the leg of the patient uh, while the knee is straight so it's a flexion of the hip with an with the fully extended knee and then you ask the patient if they have pain in the back of their leg or not uh, remember that most patients will tell you that they have uh, back uh, they have the, the radiating pain however if you ask them they will tell you that the pain is in the back of the thigh this is not a positive result positive result for a straight leg raising test has to be uh, radiating radiating pain that causes distal to the knee level. So it has to be a shooting pain that goes to the back of the thigh and the back of the calf muscle. Uh, what are the causes of radiculopathy? Uh, it is most common is the prolapsed disc so herniated disc uh, will cause a compression over the roots and will cause radicular pain and also high grade spondylolisthesis can cause a radicular pain so straight leg raising test it's to assess uh, a radicular pain uh, and the two main causes for this is the prolapsed disc and high grade spondylolisthesis very important part of the examination of children presenting with back pain is neurological examination of the lower extremity. This is very important because you want to see if the cause of the back pain is pressing on the nerves and causing neurological deficit of the lower extremity. Uh, motor uh, examination assists the motor power of the main muscle groups, hip flexor extensors, knee flexor extensor, ankle uh, and big uh, toe uh, dorsiflexors and plantar flexors. Also you have to do sensory exam, uh, see if any of the uh, um, if there is any dermatomal uh, sensory affection of the patients, uh, this is a quick picture to remind you with the dermato uh, sensory dermatomal uh, uh, nerve supply for the uh, lower extremity and reflexes, um, which is mainly uh, the knee jerk reflex and the ankle jerk reflex. After we have discussed the history and examination for children presenting with back pain, let's discuss now imaging uh, for these children. Uh, so always it starts with plain radiograph of the spine. So this is the first imaging that you have to take uh, and it will give you a, an idea about if there is any bony lesion or and also it will give you an assessment for the alignment of the spine. And you have to take two views, anteroposterior and lateral, centered over the painful area of the spine. And if you're suspecting spondylolysis, get an oblique view because you will be able to uh, see the defect uh, clearer as we're going to see uh, later on. So after discussing plain radiographs, now let's discuss the MRI. So uh, what is the advantage of the MRI over the plain radiograph? It gives better assessment for the soft tissues like herniated discs, if there is an infection or intrathecal tumors. Uh, these uh, show us much better in the MRI. So what are the indications of MRI of the spine? Um, if there is any of the red flags that we had discussed before um, in the section of the history taking, or if there is a severe low back pain that you have been treating and there is no response to the medical treatment. 
uh, uh, less frequently we use other imaging studies like bone scan and the SPECT which is the single photon emission computer tomography uh, what are the indication for this um, it helps it's uh, helpful in detecting bone tumors and infection um, uh, for example the uh, osteodosteoma shows up very hot in the bone scan and also it can differentiate between acute and chronic spondylolysis as we're going to see later on CT of the spine, we sometimes also need CT of the spine because it gives better assessment of the bony structure than plain radiographs. And when we do that, we ask for coronal, sagittal, and 3D reconstruction uh, so we can, sh uh, can show the deformities of the vertebra better than the plain radiograph. Laboratory studies are much less commonly used in back pain than uh, imaging studies. However, if you're suspecting infection, uh, you can get markers of infection like CBC with differential count, sed uh, sedimentation rate, and C-reactive protein. Uh, also, if you're suspecting a seronegative spondyloarthropathy uh, like ankylosing spondylitis, you can get HLA B27. Uh, thank you, and there will be part two for this lecture, which is going to speak about uh, certain causes of back pain in children. Thank you.